Father, thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Genesis chapter 8. I'm going to preach to you the same preaching. Jonah chapter 3 verse 2. Jonah 3 verse 2. Go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to them that preaching that I bid thee. Amen. To it the preaching that I bid thee. Amen. Preach the same preaching. Now, Genesis 8, 22, seed time and harvest. Now, Noah built did an ark, uh, an altar, verse 20, and Genesis 8, 21. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor, right? And said in his heart, see, this is where God was making a determination, he was making into himself a determination. And this determination, sorry now on stage, this determination, right, was that he would never interrupt seed time and harvest. Beautiful. Now, the Lord smelled sweet savor and he said, I will not forever change my mind about this. What will I not change my mind about? That's a covenant. And in verse 22, we see the great covenant that while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter, day and night, to never stop. There will always be seed and harvest, cold and hot, summer and winter. We are hot now. Is it not hot? Then it will be cold. Is it not true? Yeah. Now, while the earth remaineth, you see, this scripture, while the earth remaineth, the other day I was looking at uh, watching a, I didn't even get to watch it, but it was a film about um, the scientists were looking at their data and they saw a comet or some, um, what is it called? Meteor. Uh, asteroid. It was 10 kilometers wide or so. And they saw it on the data and they saw that it was coming at top speed. So they did a calculation that it was going to reach the earth. It was coming directly to the earth. It was going to reach the earth in six months and 12 days and 10 minutes, something, the, the exact calculation. And it's, these calculations are true. I was watching, I was saying, these people, they are prophesying, they may not know. And it's, it, when it hits the earth, it will, the whole earth will be affected. So that's how, what the movie is about. What so then they went to inform the US president that this is it, and it, show, it shows it, and like the F is moving, that's how come we've come to this year. It's gone around the sun once in 365 days at a top speed of about 1.6, whatever. Anyway, so it is, uh, it is moving. And so they know the calculation, the speed of every planet. Venus, 225 days, it goes around the sun. Do you see? Venus is nearer. We are 365 days for a whole going around. Venus is 225 days. So shorter. Do you get it? And Venus is rotating this way. It's going this way, whilst we are going this way. So they know exactly when Venus is here. Well, that's why you can have an app on your phone and it tells you what is 
happening. As we are going around the sun like this, Venus has decided to go this way. It's fantastic. Very beautiful, but very different. Do you see? You wouldn't want to. Venus. Venus is too hot. The pressure on Venus is like going three miles to the sea. The pressure. If you swim and you go down, if you see a pool that says 10 feet or 12 feet, when you go 13 feet, I mean, your ears will be bursting. 13 feet. And Venus, when you're on Venus, the pressure on your ears is like you have gone about three miles down. Yeah. That's the pressure. It's too much pressure. So Venus is very attractive, very beautiful. But when you marry her, when you go near it's, 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 the pressure is too much and the heat is the hottest planet 450 degrees celsius 450 and she's going the opposite direction of where she should be going it's not working at all so beautiful but some way yes how, how would you like to have your marriage 450 degrees celsius uh, even this current temperature is about 30 this pressure the temperature we experience is 30 30 degrees Celsius. Anyway, so look at the scripture again. Why am I saying all these Venus, this, this? It says, while the earth remaineth. While the earth remaineth. See time and have a So until that comet or meteor hits the earth. Because maybe this, all like all these movies, you see that they've all happened. Plagues, this, I mean, pandemics. There are films about all these things. Then eventually it happens. So this is one of the catastrophes that can happen to the earth. Is if a meteor or whatever comes and collides with the earth. Based on their calculations, it's possible. So this movie is give them six months and whatever. So it was announced. So now what to do? The whole film movie is about what they will do. First of all, they didn't believe it. And then they realized that it was true. So, until the earth is not working again, eh, four things will be there. Seed time will always have a harvest. And there will be cold, heat, summer, and winter. So, you must respect this. It's one of the covenant. And it's actually a covenant. Something so dear. Jeremiah 33, verse 19. If you can break my covenant of the day, and my covenant of the night, that there should be no day and night at their season. Then also my covenant with David, my servant, can be broken. So the fact that there is day followed by night is not just a fact, but it's a covenant. God has actually made a determination, an agreement that this will be there, day and night, day and night. And it is amazing. So the day and night which we get from our rotation on our axis, all right, is going at 1,600 kilometers per hour. We are turning this way. That gives you day and night. Is it not true? Yes. So every time we turn, we face the sun, but it turns at one. And normally a plane can go about 800 kilometers per hour. But we are turning at 1,600, about almost twice the speed of a plane. It's not very fast for a planet, but it's, that's how we rotate. So that gives us 24 hours to go around because of the size of the earth. So as long as this, the earth is there, this day, night, seed, harvest, this, this is going to be happening. And God says, it's a covenant I've made. I've determined it. Nothing can change it. Yeah. Beautiful. So everyone must respect seeds and must respect harvest times and seed times from today. Amen. Amen. Psalm 111 and verse 5. Look at what he says. He has given meat to them that fear him and he will be ever mindful of his covenant. God always thinks of his promises. You know? In fact, when you are a good person, you always remember promises if you make them. And you don't quick, easily make promises. 
You don't easily make promises. When you are a good person, first of all, you not easily make a promise. And if you make a promise, you always remember, I have to keep my promise. These are the two things. A person who is not, I mean, deep, always making, oh, I, I'll be there. I promise. Oh, God forbid. I, I promise that this. Oh, I love you. This and that. Plenty. Oh. Nothing. Shelly. Shegelege. <laughs> I, I have rarely made a promise to God. Me. Promise to God. So I said, how many will promise God? <laughs> Take your time. For God, his mind is on things he has promised. If your mind will not be on things you've promised, don't make those promises. If you know you will not give money, don't make a promise that I, pr- I pledge this, I will give it. Don't. Because once you give, your mind should be on it. I need to kill it. I promise this. I finished it. Oh, yes. One day I was in a service. A brother said he was giving $100,000. The next day he just gave the money. He said, I, I said I was giving. That's it. Oh, yes. You don't just get up and say big things. And then you don't, your mind must be on it. You say you build a church, build it. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, have you been making a lot of promises that you don't? Can I have power on stage? I feel I need to feel power. You've been making a lot of promises? Huh. Now, This year, I want you to be very conscious. How many were unable to come here for 31st? Give me a wave. Oh, just give me a wave. Wave, 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 wave. Oh, I need you to wave very well, very well. Many of you were not here on 31st. Hmm. So who was here? It's amazing. Right now, the seed of the flesh, Galatians 5 6, 6 uh, 8. Sorry, he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, and he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So, sow to the spirit this year, and out of the spirit are going to come great things. Now, sowing to the flesh. When you sit down to watch a movie, you are sowing to the flesh. When you sit down to eat, you are sowing to the flesh. When you lie down to sleep, you are sowing to the flesh. You are making some investment in the flesh. But when you oversleep and sleep and sleep and sleep and sleep and sleep sleep through your prayer time, sleep through everything, you are sowing to the flesh and you will reap corruption. All your investment is to the flesh. Nails. You are doing special nails. You are sowing to the flesh. Your your investment is in the flesh. And yes, there is some investment you can make to make your nails nice. To make your hair nice. But at a point, the investment in the nails and the hair is so much that you can actually tell the kind of person by looking at the fingernails. (laughs) I knew that I would wake some people up with that one. I have many times identified certain things and people by just looking at their fingernails. Kenneth Higgins told me, he didn't tell me, I mean, I was listening to him, he said, you can, uh, he told me, <laughs> he said, you can know a lot by shaking somebody's hand. Oh, yes. He said, when you shake your hand, you can, you can sense some things about the person. Oh, yes. 
I'll tell, I won't say what I won't tell you what he said. Because he said what you can you can know by shaking somebody's hand. Yes. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes. What does it tell you? It tells you this is a person who makes heavy investments in the flesh. Oh yes. Heavy investment. The same person who can spend the whole day doing nails cannot spend the whole day going to the gardens to pray. Yes, yes, usually. Usually. Or if he cannot pray for 30 minutes in the morning. And the person who spends so much time doing the nails, okay, may not spend time kneeling down in the house and praying to God. Yes, praying. Or even reading the Bible, get a revelation or listening to a message. And if you do, then that is good. So when you listen to a message, you are sowing to the Spirit. When you, when you read your Bible, you are sowing to the Spirit. Galatians 6 verse 8. It says, He that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. What investment do you make? So, this year, sow good seeds, because out of those seeds are going to come certain things. When you listen to unbeliever music, worldly music, you sow seeds often of lust, night clubbing, Worldliness, lightness. I mean, Rick Joyner speaks about how many of the songs in the world are meant to charge the people with lust. Hey! And people feel like fornicating whilst they are at the club. And they fornicate whilst they are there. Practically. Is it not true? In the club. In the what? In the washroom in the club. You know yourselves. Ask your neighbor. 31st night, where were you? Were you in a club or you were in a church? What a blessing it is to have a child who is sowing into the spirit. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We are not against nails. Who? Do them. We are not against hair. We are not against your wigs. We are not against your dresses. But you see them shopping. Hey, some of you, if you get shops, eh? Charlie, the way you roam through the shop, eh? The bright lights will be dazzling you. If only you spend a little time sowing to the spirit. Yes. And many times, it is a lack of, you can see, that this person does not invest in something else. Many of you have been in church. I told you, learn how to cook. Learn how to, learn how to do things practically. You will not do that. That is as you are sowing to the spirit that you are. Bible says, obey them that have the rule over you. Hebrews 13 7. Obey them that have the rule over you. For they watch for your souls. Yes. Obey them. You should have obeyed what I told you. I told you to learn how to cook. Hmm? Your, your granola soup is like water. It's like brownish water. You know it is not nice. <laughs> yes. If you heard that we were coming to your house, your heart will start uh, beating. Palpitations. Huh? <laughs> 
you had obeyed, if you had rather learned how to cook, make fried rice, make jollof, make whatever you want, banku, whatever you want to eat, you don't know how to do anything. You don't know how to do anything. Only nails, hair, this, that. You have been sowing to the flesh and you reach corruption. You will soon be arguing in the house, in your marriage. You'll be arguing and you'll never agree to anything because no one is there to point out that, oh, shame, you don't know how to do anything. That is why there's even a beast in the house. Oh, yes. Oh, shame. So you should have obeyed. So into the spirit. Even if not for anything, ah, our, our pastor said that we should learn how to cook. As a, as a girl. Or even as a boy. You should learn certain things. Be nice. Don't be bush. Hmm? Bushmen are causing a lot of problems in marriages. Shaka to makabarobalaza. The song alone is a message. Be nice. Yes. Because all the things are there. You won't do them. And you are a bush man. We have two types. Bush, bush boys and bush girls. And depending on which one you get. Yes. So, to the spirit. Even if the discussion was, was go and get it, learn to have a dress by obeying the voice of them that have the rule over you. You are sowing to the spirit and you reap life from it. Life from it. Yes. All right? Number two, the seed of money. Oh, yes. Money is considered as a seed. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, it's not just like slang that we're in the church and we say, Charlie, sow your seed. Charlie, sow, uh, I mean, make you sow your seed. We are going to sow a seed. No, it's in the Bible. It's a Bible, it's Bible language. Yes. Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. All right. It says, God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Verse 9. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad. Verse 10 says, he that ministered seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown. He was telling the Corinthians that God should multiply the seed they have sown. So the, he didn't use the word money. So we don't use the word money in church. We use the word seed. Because it is a seed. It's a seed. We don't use money. You don't find it in the, the Bible. And you multiply your money that you've given. And there's nothing like that. The word in the Bible is the word seed. So when you are giving in church, it's a seed. You are sowing a seed. It's not a bill you are paying. It's not a payment you are making. It's not a donation you are making. You are sowing a seed. That's the Bible terminology. So anybody, anything you give to God, to church, to prisoners, to anything, you are sowing a seed. So the Bible says that may God multiply and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So it's increase the fruits. So there's no money when you spend money in the house of God. You get it? It is the best money because it is not just buying something. It is a seed that is sown. Whatever you sow, you are going to reap. And when you sow money, you are sowing a special seed. Now, one of the very special seeds is your tithe. Malachi 3 say, in verse 10 says, Bring the tithe into the house of the Lord, and I, the response or the harvest, uh, the effect of that seed is to cause the windows of heaven to be open over you. Which sounds like a good thing. How many feel that it sounds like a good thing to have the windows of heaven open in your life? Very, very good thing. When the windows are open, the fresh air blows. So money will flow into your life supernaturally. Hey, listen to me. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something. Just as a personal, some, I think I'll come down to tell you. Yeah. 
you know, let me just tell you, by the grace of God, I've been to university, okay, for seven good years, not three years, not a two-year diploma, not three years for a first degree, whatever, seven years, seven solid years. I've never failed an exam in university, never. No, even O-level, A-level, never. And I was always top, 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 top. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm not, I'm just, just saying I've, I've just had a degree. I'm telling you how the degree came about. <laughs> Help me with the volume, please. I, I need more power down here. Something not here. Okay. I've seen people work from the time I finished school when I was 25 years old. Yes. Let me tell you. You will find out becoming rich, prospering, eh, is a very complex and not easy to explain phenomenon. Very difficult. You can't explain. Is it from the school? Is it from the education? Is it from hard work? Is it from whatever? Nobody really seems to know. There is, is it from your salary? Is it from becoming a star? Is it from any of these things? It's very difficult to know how. Because each of these has proved not to be the case. Yes. Whether is it school? A lot of people have been to a lot of school. Oh, yes. And have nothing. People work very hard. Very, very, very hard. Oh, yes. A lot of poor lawyers. A lot of poor doctors. A lot of, I mean, people moving around without cars. It is a mystery. And once you leave God out of this mystery, it's up to you. You you and this world, how wild the world is, it's up to you to find out for yourself. Is it the amounts that people have on their salary slips? No, it doesn't seem to be the case. Why are people coming from outside Ghana to Ghana for Christmas? Huh? Have, you, have you asked yourself there are so many people who are not from Ghana and they are not Ghanaians from all over the world coming to Ghana for Christmas yes, rather the airports are empty abroad but the flights to Ghana line is full oh yes why, what, what is here you are here, you want to leave <laughs> I beg you, huh? This year, decide with the smallest nothing that you are or that you have that you will sow the seed of the tithe to involve heaven in your level of prosperity. Involve heaven in your prosperity. Because the windows of heaven means heaven is gotten involved. Angels, somebody who opens windows, somebody, it provokes heaven. That is the tithe. That's what the seed that Jacob promised to God. That is the seed that Abraham paid tithes. Abraham paid tithes. The great people. Jacob promised God. He said, and of all that you give me. He made three promises to God. He said, of all that you give me, I will give you tithe. The tithe. I think Genesis 32 or something, or 28. Yes. He said, of all that you give me, yes, I will give you the tithe of it. (laughs) Beautiful. Are you listening to me? Uh Aha. You know, one day I, I preached about this, put the scripture... And a lawyer, some of you may know him, Uncle Kojo, Pensiencho. Bless his name and his heart. He came to me after. He said, you know, when you preach this, he said, because I'm a lawyer, you know, I saw three conditions. If you go up a bit, he says, this stone, yes, which I have set shall be God's house. And I will give you, go the verse before. Yes. Then shall the Lord be my God. He told me, I see three things in this contract. 
He came to see me after the service. He said, I see three things in this contract. He said, if God, eh, so that if God keeps me so that I come back. You see, he was now on a journey to go and marry. Remember? Yes. Yeah, he was on a journey to go and marry. He said, if God will be with me and keep me so that I'll come back. Eh? He vowed a vow. If God will keep me in this way that I'm going. All right, and give me bread. If God does th- these three things, God keeps me, God brings me back, God gives me. Eh? Go to the next verse or show more verses so that I come in peace. Then one, I also do three things. The Lord will be my God. Number two, verse 22. All right, this stone which I have set shall be God's house. So he, I will build God's house. I'll build God's house. I'll build a church. And then, number three, everything you give me, I will give a tenth to God. I will make this. He came to see me after. He said, that I see it as it's a contract. He said, when you were preaching, I saw that it's three things. You do three things, I will do three things. I always remember, when I, when I preach about this, I remember him. Yeah, contract law, I think it is. And these are the art students. Yes. It, and I think that you have to see this covenant thing, that the seed time and how, when you plant your seed, God says, okay, harvest time. Harvest time. Harvest time will come. It's mysterious. We, the science students, when we are in school, no one can match us. All the whole class, everybody does the exam and they choose the best to do science, the best. When I was in Form 3, they chose the best from six classes. So we go to Form 4, 4S1, 4S2, 4S3. And I was in 1B, we were chosen by, uh, I think, Common Entrance, you are put in 1A to uh, F. And I was in 1B, 2B, 3B. Then we did the exam for the science. And I was in 4S1, the first group. Yes, the best science students. I was in form 4S1, 5S1. Then I came to sixth form to do. And the art students, they were, they were so sad that they hadn't gotten science. Hmm. Today, these art students who couldn't get science, who could, today, look at them. Bank managers, so called economists. That's right. That's right. They are the richest people. Yeah. Is it not mysterious? mysterious? I beg you, listen. Better apply, involve heaven in your finances by planting your seed of the tithe. Involve heaven. Involve heaven. Because you should, it should have been the science students who were the richest. Oh, yes. But it is not so. At all. In real life, it's art students who are rich. That's why we, the science students, are beginning to revolt against some of their things. Because we feel that they are spoiling the economies of the world. Yeah. So this year, your tithe must come. If your income for the whole month is 20 CDs, your two CDs must be with God. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. I'm telling you, you can have the biggest amount mentioned as your salary. I've been in the same church from the age of 25 till now. And I've seen over the years, it, it's, it's not what you people are calling and this and that, that makes a person with. There's so much to it. So involve God in your finances. One thing I can say, uh, I've never done anything to get money. All the decisions I've taken, not even one has ever been about getting money. Wow. Ever. Since I be- came into the ministry. Wow. Every decision I've taken looks like I'm getting poorer by the decision. Including coming to the First Love Church. Oh, yes. Here is Kodesh full of ready-made, powerful yes. members who sell cutting materials, iron cooking pots, iron rods, this, this, everything. They have cars, whatever. And I come to join Students and children. It's not a decision that is trying to make somebody financially better. Yes. Oh, yes. 
So brothers and sisters, let God be involved in your money issues. Just learn to be a faithful person. Lord, what you give me? The tenth of all. Like Jacob, I pledge my tenth to you. If you do this, I also do this. I will never fail to pay my tithe. And then, another seed is the seed connected to Galatians 6-7. Galatians 6-7 says, whatsoever a man shall sow, he shall reap. Yeah. When uh, uh, President Kennedy died, when Kennedy died, Malcolm X made a speech and it caused a lot of problems. But he said something to the effect that whatever a man sows, he shall reap. And whatever America has done is like it has come back. It, it caused a whole lot of problems. People have been using this verse to explain bad things. Yes. But this verse, Galatians 6 7, is explaining Galatians 6 6. That's right. Teach it. What is Galatians 6 6? What is Galatians 6 6? Who is the man? Ah, there's somebody up there who is, I don't know who he is. See me after church. Let him that is taught in the word, put the two together, six and seven. Let him that is taught in the word communicate one unto him that teacher in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. So, Malcolm X quotation, do you see? He didn't, I, don't think, I don't know if he used the verse, but he said something about a rooster coming home, something. I mean, hey. Or oh, the cock coming home to roost something. It was something like that. What you must realize is God is saying, what is going to come back? The seeds you've sown. To appreciate God's servant and the one who teaches you. Just learn it. Learn it. You, you will see a divine involvement in your life. Beautiful. Are you still around? Oh, yes. The seed of the word of God in your life. Isaiah 55. 10. As the rain comes down, huh? and the snow comes down and does not go back and waters the earth, and it has an effect on the earth. It has what? Look at it. Look at the verse. As the rain comes down. Look at the scripture. And the snow from heaven. Are you seeing the verse? This is Isaiah 55 verse 10. It says as the rain is coming down. And the snow is coming down. And it has an effect on the earth. It waters the world. Wow. That it should bud and flow. And give bread to the eater. Next verse. For as the rain comes down. The next verse. So shall my word be. That's how my word will be. That's how my word will be exactly. The what, it, it waters you. This year you'll be watered with messages and preaching proper, proper, proper. You know, I want to tell you, everybody who thinks you've heard a message, sometimes you're looking for the message and realize, yeah, I know this one, I've heard it before, I want to hear something new. Hear yeah, the same old one again, but now you'll be surprised what you're going to hear in the same old one that's going to water you. Oh, yes. I've been listening to messages since 3 a.m. Oh, yes. I've been listening to messages since 3 a.m. I slept at 12 and I woke up at 3. And I've been listening to messages. It waters. Look at the effect of it. Look. Put a verse there, this man. As the rain comes down from heaven and returneth not, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth. Listen to message, it will water you and cause you to bring forth. Then as for the harvest, you are going to get it. Beautiful. Then soul winning is another seed time and harvest time. Proverbs 11 verse 30. 
the fruit of the righteous or the harvest that righteous people get is a tree of life to them. The fruit of the righteous. All right? And he that winneth souls is wise. Proverbs 11 verse 30. The fruit of the right. So, you, the righteous person has fruit. He has a harvest. But what, what is the harvest the righteous person has? The harvest of soul winning. That's why this year, everybody is going to be connected to a bus. Oh, yes. We are even going to show you on the screen how the buses are moving. You watch and see. Everybody will know my bus is moving. You'll be proud of your bus. You'll be proud of your bus. Or your buses. Wow. The fruit of the righteous, when a righteous man is getting his fruits, it's like a tree of life to him. When a righteous man is getting fruits, it's like a tree of life to him. This year, you'll be a righteous man who is getting a lot of good fruits. And then he says, he that winneth souls is wise. It's the same thing. You see, soul winning is very good. It's very wise. When you are a soul winner, you are wise. You are very wise. Pray for Healing Jesus campaign that we will sow more seeds and reap more harvest than ever. Amen. The seed of church planting. We'll be planting more churches. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, who then is Paul and who is Apollos? Huh? But ministers by whom you believed. Verse 6. I have what? Planted. Apollos watered. But God gave the increase. Amen. God gave what? The increase. I planted. A lot of church work is planting. It's just planting with nothing much to see. And God willing, this coming year, there's going to be a season of planting. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know, when you drive out, there are many, many souls. We have to sow seeds. We have to plant. You see, this is it's different from all the other churches. It's a mega church. The way we work here and the things we do here, most of the others are not, cannot really do what we are doing. It's a church that is one church, but it's big. Yes. So, the planting of seeds. When I planted, I remember our church in the UK. Ah, we started with five people. Bishop Richard's wedding. So, his wife was there. He was there. About three other people. Hey, I preached. Five people. I went around looking for people. What was I doing there? It was my 30th birthday. And I was planting a seed. On exactly my birthday, I was in London to plant. My 30th birthday, I was there to plant the seed. So that was my life's work. I've planted. I live in London. Roam around. Building the church. And I organized for who you know as Bishop Richard to come to the UK on Egypt Air. He came on Egypt Air. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I went to Switzerland and I lived there. I was not married for long. My wife was living in an uncompleted house without security. Even some type of armrobes came there, or thieves, I should say. More of thieves. Oh, yes. They took things. The house was uncompleted. And I was in Switzerland planting a church. I, I met in a room. The room will not be bigger than from here. The whole church. And I told them I'm here. S Switzerland. I'm here. Some of the people who were there, Pastor Jimmy, who trained Kezar, he told Kezar, you one day sing for Bishop. And he was always telling her, I'm, teach, I'm training you one day you, you sing for bishop. Yeah. Jimmy was in the room. His wife, Anita, was in the room. Mary was in the room. All those people are still around. Oh, yes. Edith. 
They were there, few, few people. And I was there, and I led them 20, for 21 days. Prayers every day. Come in this small room. God move, God move, God move. I was there planting. If today I'm reaping eh, the fruit of the harvest, and somebody sees churches, 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 churches. Oh, yes. Day after day. It was from there that I went to London. And then I went to New York to start another church myself. Those days I don't send people, I go myself. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's just like some people I send, some people, the whole system sends you. Yes. I arrived in New York. I've never, I'd never been to America before. When I got there, I, I, was, I was looking in New York. I, I didn't know what is this place. And then Dr. Nosh, he was a young doctor. He had a car with two doors. I was there when he arrived. I, I got there before him. I was there. I've never been there. Sat in his car. And he took me to his house. He had a small house with a room underground without windows. And he put me in the room without windows. He knows himself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, his wife was not even there. He didn't have, no, I mean, he has been my roommate before. He doesn't have anything, he doesn't have food, doesn't have anything. But I was happy to be there. And there, we went and found a small room, you know, Manhattan, in New York, the tall buildings. We went and found one of them and went up to which floor? Do you remember the floor at the top there? About 40, 50 floors. And then one small room like this. And I stood there with about five or six people. I said, I've come to America to start a church. And I said, seven, my message today is seven reasons why eh, Lighthouse must be in America. All those people are still in the church. And Lily was one of them. She died. Her children are with us. Beautiful. I preached with all my heart. I was sweating. Upstairs. You see, you went now walking on the road. You see the tall, tall, tall. We were at the top somewhere in the small room that they rented to us. Yeah, I was planting a seed of the church. If today I have thousands of members in America who can get up at 3 a.m. or their time there and be praying with us. Don't be jealous of things that somebody has spent time planting it because the Bible says seed time and harvest, it will never, it will never stop. It will never stop happening. Tamale Church. I sent good people there. And many churches I visited myself. Paul said, I planted Apollos water. One day I bought a, a, a new car. Or the church bought a, a car. And I was driving called Muzu. The car was called Muzu. Muzu. And I drove. I left Accra 7 a.m. Where am I going? I'm going to visit the Tamale Church in Nyangpala Church. From Accra to Tamale and to Nyangpala. Nyangpala is near Tamale. Oh, yes. Visiting. Visiting the churches. Planting. Seed time and harvest time. Seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest. On the way, we had a terrible accident. That is why when we see Orangus trying to scatter the churches, I say, my friend, you don't know what it is. It has involved to start a church. It's not breaking away from people. It's not... Hey, sorry, sorry, sorry. These are their toys, they are toys. <laughs> yeah. Are you there? Yes. I said, when you see orangus trying to spoil things, see, 
No, don't try. It's not like that. I rolled over like this. I was, it was my life I was giving for the idea of a church in Tamale. My life, I was sowing a seed. Yes. Many things we don't have, we haven't sown seeds. We haven't sown seeds. That's why you don't have it. Some of us don't have beloveds because we don't smile. There's no seed of... <laughs> Just... It's too expensive for you. Your, your face is always... Some of you can't open your mouth and talk. You remember the beauty queens. They always make them give speeches, isn't it? Because your beauty is based on how you look and what you say. That's... Why do you think this man was... Uh, Esther was being chosen. Things were being said. What was the difference between them? When you get a thousand girls, there will be so many similarities. You will even be confused at the point. You see, it's like zebra, like zebras that are passing. What's the difference between the zebras? Yes. Seeds and harvests. Let's be careful. Let's be careful of evil seeds of thorns. You may plant an evil seed, but remember that evil seeds also are seeds. Jacob sowed a seed of life-changing deception. Huh? Life-changing deception. The Bible says the fruit of lies in Hosea. Life-changing deceptions. The fruit of lies. I'm sure somebody will find it. All right? You have eaten the fruit of lies. Yes. You have eaten what? The fruit of your lies. The fruit of your lies. Jacob bowed down before his father. And his father said, who are you? He said, oh, I am, I am Esau, uh, Esau. So he felt him. But you are, you are, you are uh, is he, was he hairy or smooth? He was smooth. And he wanted, he wanted to look hairy. hairy. So the old man couldn't change. So he, he deceived his father, you know, in a, in a life-changing, life-changing way. Oh, yes. <laughs> hey, Jacob. And in verse 12, Genesis 27, he says, My father peradventure will fill me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver, and I shall bring a curse upon me. So it's like, I will sow a seed of deceiving and I will reap the curse. I said, and his mother, said, his, mother, his mother convinced him, so let your curse be on me. But it wasn't really so. It didn't happen that way. The curse was on he, Jacob, also. Maybe it was less, a bit on the mother and a bit on him. Maybe it was less. Or maybe the blessing helped to mix it up. But let's, if you look at Jacob, the first thing was when he was getting married you remember the way you deceive this guy and it's like it, it is like in a very wild way that changes a whole life like you change somebody's life somebody's life somebody's ministry somebody's future I mean the whole existence was changed so he also came he was getting married and you see when you are very young very strong erection, strong desire. I mean, he didn't even check. <laughs> he just followed through, and when he woke up in the morning, eh, I mean, it was, what, what have you done to me? And Jacob said unto Laban, give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled. And Laban gathered 
all the men together and made a feast. That means there was a big wedding. And as Jacob was sitting there, he didn't know that he was marrying Leah. He was looking at this is my beautiful wife, this is my beautiful wife, my beautiful wife. He made what? A feast. A wedding. So the whole wedding, he was fooled. He was fooled totally at the wedding. As he was drinking, he said, oh, I'm finished. I don't know what. They planned the thing, cry. So those of you who are liars and tell life-changing lies, you should expect life-changing harvests of your lies. Then, his salary was changed 10 times. He said in Genesis 31, 41, I have been 20 years in your house. I've served thee 14 years for my two daughters, six years for thy cattle, and thou hast changed my wages 10 times. Every time he was going to score, he was running towards them. Then they just moved the goalpost to the side. It's time. You said this, and then they changed it. That's what the law students are saying. You said we have to pass this exam and have this grade, and we pass, and we will get admission to the law school. Now that we've passed, you are saying, what are they saying? You must have something. Eh? What are they saying? 50 in each section. <laughs> so they've changed it. They changed it. You changed the goalpost. So, swivel. So 10 times he was changed. Because you changed somebody's life totally. Then, he was there and he was told that his son was dead. But his son was not dead. He did, he did a funeral. Listen, this is a man who did a wedding for somebody who was not the person. And a funeral for somebody who was also not dead. I don't know if you're understanding what I'm talking about. We are talking about harvest. He did a wedding for somebody who was not marrying and who was not married. And he did a funeral for somebody who was not dead. For 12 years, he mourned. He never saw his son. He did a funeral. But because he was a good deceiver, he can fool people. He can fool people. Then his son's diner, his daughter was raped by somebody. So they came to see him and he was agreeing with them for the engagement because he was mature. He said, okay, you know, let's discuss. So the sons, eh? and Shechem said unto her father and her brethren, let me find grace. Well, what you shall say to me, I will give it. Ask me whenever anything, dowry and gift. Genesis 34 verse 12. Ask me whatever you give and I will give you according. And the sons of Jacob, uh, they just spoke up. The sons of Jacob, oh, no problem. <laughs> uh, you are just, uh, we, we have a way. We can circumcise and uh, we will accept you. It's only we don't want to marry uncircumcised. I hope you get what I'm saying. And Jacob was standing there and the sons are taking over. So when they circumcise, and circumcise without anesthesia, without antibiotics, and without, without a knife, eh, after three days, that is when the swelling and the pain, everybody had a swelling like a boil. <laughs> Jacob's sons, Jacob was there when he had, his sons went and slaughtered the whole time. If you read other history books, eh, because of that, Jacob had to flee. He had to gather everybody in the Bible and run for his life. They said, you have made me stink, everybody. And do you think they, they'll just let them go? They chased them and Jacob had many wars because of that. Oh yeah, many wars. Simeon and Levi and so on, Reuben, they fought many, many wars because of this thing. Apostle Paul, he also sowed a seed of beating churches. Hmm? (laughs) 
seed time and harvest, it shall not cease. Yes, and you know, one of the things about God is that he blesses and forgives at the same time. And there's judgment and also mixed with blessing. It's like a mixture. Because unless you think of Jacob in this way, you cannot not realize that a curse is also working and a blessing is also working. Yeah. And he was talking and arguing in Acts 9, 20. I can give you 14 scriptures. Different, different examples. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24. He said, from verse 23, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. All right, I'm faster than this man. He says, in stripes above measure. Ooh. Stripes were above measure, like they didn't count it again. You know, lashes usually they are counted six, ten, three, twelve. Be, they, they don't measure. The measurement is stopped. In prisons, more frequent. But he was imprisoning people. More frequent. In deaths, often like they thought he was dead many times. Verse 24, of the Jews I received 40 stripes five times. <laughs> Jewish stripes, the one that Jesus received. Five, he had it on five occasions. What Jesus said, he had it five times. You said you are killing Philip. Is it Philip that he killed? <laughs> Stephen, Stephen. Look, this year I want us to respect the law of seed time and harvest time. Amen. Whatever you sow, you will reap it. Yeah. Verse 25. Thrice I was beaten with rods. <laughs> that apart from the beating, the stripes, they use rods, which are long sticks. He had that experience three times. He was beating people. God said, look, I forgive you, be my apostle. But you, the, seed, the seed time and harvest time, eh? no problem. You be my apostle, but the seed time and harvest time, while the earth remains, it shall not cease. They beat him with what, like long, uh, rigid sticks. They beat him with them. He had it three times. Then the strife, which is 39, because in the Jews believe that when you are beaten 40 times, you are dead. So they give you 39 so that you are not dead. That we didn't kill you. They believe that when you get 40 stripes, you have been killed. Yes. So they beat you 39. And he had that experience five times. And then, stoning. He was stoned once. He was standing there when they were stoning. You don't want stones to be thrown at you. Don't throw stones. He that throws a stone, a stone will be thrown at him. Don't throw stones. He, he, was, he, he wrote in himself, he said, I held the clothes of them who were stoning the people. Are you still there? Yes. Then the last one. Don't be discouraged by this. They are, they are realities. And I think sometimes when you are going to do something, you should remember this thing I'm doing here eh, is a seed. It will boomerang back. Yes, it will boomerang back. And when the time comes, you may not recognize it. David, King David, he went to kill somebody's husband and also went to sleep with the wife. Second Samuel chapter 12 and verse 8. The Lord, the Lord spoke to him. He said, you, I gave you your master's house and, and thy master's wives. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives and gave thee the house of Israel and Judah. If that had not been enough, if that had been too little, I would have moreover have given unto thee such and such things. So he said, apparently he says he has inherited Saul's wives. You know, one time I, I went to a, a king in Nigeria and he told me that he had inherited the former wives of the former king after he died. I think they were 23. Many his were eight. But they were all like grandmothers. Don't shout so much. They were like grandmothers and great grandmothers. But he has to look after them because he has inherited them. So he has to feed in them. And so don't think of sex. (laughs) 
you should be sorry. Then he said, why have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do this evil? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and taken his wife to be thy wife and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now, therefore, verse 10. Oh, oh the sword shall never depart from thy house. Nariko uramba asperigolo samadalia. There will be a sword in the spirit moving in your house, like inside the house. It's moving in the house, about to kill somebody. Huh? Because you've used a sword to kill your friend. And thou hast taken the wife of Uriah to be the head, to be thy wife. That says the Lord. I will raise up evil against thee out of thy own house. Huh? I will raise up evil out of your own house and will take your wives before thine eyes and give them to thy neighbor. That was Absalom. Absalom came and took all his wives and went and made a tent and called his wives. All of you come. Hmm? And the whole city were watching as Absalom, he would stand outside with his towel. And then one of David's wife would come, he put a nighty on her, and then they would all be sitting and say, darling, let's go. Then he goes into the tent, then brings another of the wives like that. He took all the wives, fair colored wives. I will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them to thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. He was doing open air. Something that sometimes people are encouraged honeymoon to find, you know. <laughs> Charlie, the seed that the harvest is, is some way. How many realize that it's some way? Yeah. That's why in the Bible it says, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, burning for burning, eh? beating for beating. Or everything for this. You sow this seed, you get this half. That's a law that's working in the world, in this world. So this year, let's sow good seeds. Yes. Let's sow seeds of ministry. Seeds of soul winning. Good seeds. Even if you have sown some bad seeds, when the good seeds come up, at least there'll be some purpose and pineapples and other things there, apart from the thorns. Yes. Be careful of having only planted bad seeds in your life. You must start planting good seeds. So, you see, unless you analyze Jacob, you can't know that he's, he's, there's a curse working his life because the blessings were also heavy. The blessing go what? The blessing go loud. It go worry the neighbors. The neighbors. Your blessing go loud. This year, may you be the greatest sower of mighty seeds. And may you begin to start reaping harvests. Amen. Yes. Do you know one of the prayers you can pray? You can tell God, God, all these years I've done this. I've been a Christian for so many years. Oh, serving the Lord and working in the church. You can tell God, Lord, I've been a Christian for so many years. Serving the Lord. So, you see, all of us, whatever seed you have sown, you can sometimes bring it to the Lord. Lord, I've been a Christian for so many years. Serving the Lord and working in the church. It's a seed you've sown. It's a seed you've sown. Many years ago, I was with my friend. We went to the golf course. And we all start from hole one. And he took the club. And the ball, I think he missed the ball. You see, it looks easy. And the ball went some. Now, when that happened, some friends, some people were standing there. <laughs> they started laughing. It was very some way. We were all quiet. Then we also played and we went. Three holes later, later on, we were walking with him when he rushed across to see the guys who laughed at him. And we didn't hear what they said. And he came back. And I said, oh, Charlie, wh where did you go? He said, I went to sort out that guy. The guy who laughed at me. I said, why? He said, 
we are all gentlemen on this course. And he said, I have not sown a certain seed to reap it. I've never laughed at anybody. I don't come here to laugh at anyone. I don't see why I should reap such a thing in my life. Oh, yes. Everything you have in sown, you will not reap in the name of Jesus. There are certain things you will say to yourself, I, have, I don't see why I should reap such a seed. I've not sown such a seed in my life to reap any such thing. Lift your hands up and pray for the humility to be a beautiful serving seed sower in 2022. We are in 2022. Oh yes, Father. We give you thanks and we give you praise for blessing us mightily in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for the wonderful seeds we are going to sow this year and the wonderful harvest we are going to enjoy this year. We give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Put your hand on your heart. Father, every seed we have sown that is bad, deliver us from that harvest. And give us wisdom and grace to start investing and sowing the right seeds that we may reap good seeds. Thank you. Thank you for your blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And as every head is bowed and every eye closed, if you are here today and you want to give your life to Jesus, pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to God on this first Sunday of the year. I want to be born again. If you are here like that, wherever you are, lift your hand up high like this. Lift it high like this. Pastor, pray with me on this first Sunday. I want to give my heart and my life to Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, if you want to give your life to God, to Jesus, you've lifted up your hand like this. Come to the front. Come all the way to the front. I'm going to pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Just come, 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 come. I want to pray with you. Come, come quickly. God bless you. Come. Come to the front. Come to where I am. Jesus is calling. Lift your hands and say this prayer with me. This is your day of salvation. Close your eyes and say this prayer. Say, Jesus, please forgive me. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Say, Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. I give my heart to you. Take my life from today. Make me a new person. From today, I am born again and I will follow Jesus with all my heart. Thank you for saving me today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.